welcome to the Northern Counties East League podcast. I'm Richard Watts. I'm now joined by League General Manager Matt Jones. So, hello everybody again. Welcome to the Northern Counties East League podcast. It's been a really busy week of cup action over the past past week. We had 17 teams taking part in the FA Vars over the weekend. Bit of a mixed bag. Eight teams went through with nine being knocked out. We've already got Hallam and Silzen who are exempt until the, not the, the following round, but the one after that, the second round proper, which will be played in November. So at the moment, we've got 10 teams left in the competition overall. Pick of the results from the weekends, Beverly Town, who beat fellow Northern Counties East League Premier Division side Winterton Rangers 5-0. Harrogate Railway Athletic, who knocked out four-time winners of the competition, Whitley Bay on penalties. And Yorkshire Amateur, who currently rock bottom of our Division 1, been on a really poor one of, one of results in the league, but they went through after an excellent 3-1 win against Newcastle Benfield. The draw has been made for the first round proper, and those games will be played on the weekend of the 19th of October. And I think from the Northern Counties East League point of view, the pick of the ties sees Division 1 promotion chasers Woonwell Town, who've been drawn at home to play Premier Division side Handsworth. That promises to be a cracking cup tie. We now know 14 of our 16 remaining teams for the JCP Construction Northern Counties East League Cup. There's still still two ties to be played. Of those 14 sides, we've got 11 left from the Premier Division and just three from Division 1. The three sides through so far, Horbury Town, Selby Town and Wesley Bridge Athletic. Potentially there's one more as Yorkshire Amateur have still got to play their tie. Because of the FA Vars involvement, only 10 league fixtures were played over the weekend. The pick of the bunch, an outstanding result for Barton Town, who picked up a much-needed three points with a 1-0 win against High Fly in Silsden. And scorer of that goal, Elliot Broughton. Elliot's been around for a number of years now. I actually signed Elliot as a 16-year-old when I was at Louth. And I can't believe he's still banging in goals at step five. He must be about 100. Now, I didn't say that. He's He's been around a lot, a lot of years at this level. An absolute pleasure to work with. Really nice lad. I'm pleased Elliot's still doing it in the Northern Counties East League. After a slow start, Rossington Main are up to sixth after beating Picker in town 4 1. While Thackley's strong start to the season continued, they moved up to second in the table after a 2 1 win against much fancied Hallam. In Division 1, Horbury Town are now the new leaders and they picked up a 3 1 away win at Louth Town. Again, busy midweek ahead this week. We will have been played most of the game by the time the podcast goes out and a full round of league fixtures on Saturday to look forward to. Welcome to Seasons Past with Libby Edwards. In this episode, I'm looking back to the 2002-2003 season. The Premier Division contained the 18 teams from the previous season, plus promoted Bridlington Town and Osset Albion, who were relegated from the Northern Premier League. The league was won by Bridlington Town, who won 29 and drew 5 of their 38 games, finishing with 92 points. A 7-0 home win against Borough Wash Victoria was their biggest win. They also won 5-0 at home to Garforth and Armthorpe Welfare. For the second successive season, Brig Town finished second. They won 22 and drew 6, finishing on 72 points. In third place were Goul who finished on 71 points. Garforth Town finished bottom. Second bottom were Borough Wash Victoria and third bottom, Armthorpe Welfare. Newcomers to Division 1 were Long Eaton United and Shirebrook Town, who were both promoted from the Central Midlands. The league was won by Mickleover Sports. They finished on 75 points, with 24 wins and 3 draws. Runners-up were Shirebrook Town. They won 21 and drew 5 finishing on 68 points. In third place were Long Eaton United who finished on 58 points. In the 17-team first division, Staveley Miners Welfare finished bottom. Hatfield Main resigned from the league and Louth United folded. Biggest home win of the season was Bridlington Town's 7-0 win against Borough Wash Victoria. Biggest away wins were both 6-0. 
Harrogate Railway at Hallam and Buxton at Garforth. The League Cup was won by Osset Albion. In the final played at Brig they beat Sheffield 3-0. Beaten semi-finalists were Shirebrook Town and Bridlington Town. The President's Cup was won by Harrogate Railway, who defeated Bridlington Town, 7-2 on aggregate. In the FA Cup Harrogate Railway had a great run, making it to the second round proper. They beat Whitley Bay, Esh Winning, Chester Lee Street, Workington and Slough Town. In the second round tie they lost 3-1 at home to Bristol City. Brick Town were again the stars in the FA Vars. They went all the way to the final which was played at West Ham United. They won the competition beating Sudbury, 2-1 in that final. Bridlington Town made it to the sixth round where they lost 2-1 at Brig. Pickering Town made the fourth round in what was a very good competition for the league. <laughs>
And um, but unfortunately, this is where the FA has finished for us. And, yeah. and as you say, if we'd have got through, we'd have been away to um, the Yeah, yeah, which you know that would have been a good uh, a good clash. I think I think if games were just forty five minutes long, goal would be sort of uh, mid table. <laughs> what the, with, with the performances, because, uh, well, when they played us, I mean, and Richard will back me up here, when they played Bart, you don't look like a bottom of the league team. I mean, no, you look really, look really good. Yeah. Never give never give up. Lots of, lots of endeavour, lots of hard work. And, uh, you know, that's what they need, I think. It is, yeah. It is, so, yeah. So, but we we are. We opt for the best as we as we go along, you know. De- definitely. So that was goal. Um, now is one of the big ones for me. Arrogate Railway with a superb win against Whitley Bay, two two four three on penalties. Yeah. What a great what a great win! I didn't we didn't we say this last week? I might people might correct us if we're wrong. Didn't we fancy Arrogate Railway? Well, yeah. Yes, I think you. I think you actually said it, Aaron, didn't you? Did I? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah I, did, I, did, I did fancy him. Um, so, well done, Arrogate Rail. I'm just noticing, yeah. looking at that, that uh, Whitley Bay got two goals after the 90th minute to equalise. Oh. Arrogate with 2-0 up yeah. going into stoppage time. Yeah, oh, so, they, so they've done well to win on penalties then, haven't they? Because yeah. they've yeah. been real down with that. So, well done, Arrogate Rail, yeah. yeah. Selby, they lost to um, Affordable Football Club Liverpool 3-1. However... What a good crown. 322 there. Yeah. So, so good people of Selby uh, went to uh, went out to watch them. So well well done for the crowd, Selby. Hard luck with the result. And now Sides not with us and Wakefield. What a great win at Barnton. Not Barton, Barnton, 2-1. I, I didn't fancy Wakefield to beat them, but they have done. They've done really well there. Hopefully that'll kick the season on, do you think? Oh, you could, yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. Really, really good win at Barnton. Um, Woonwell showing their super form by beating Ashton Athletic 3 0. And for me, what has to be the win of the week over uh, our friends over at Bracken Edge, Yorkshire Amateurs, putting Newcastle Benfield to the sword 3 1. Well done, Yorkshire Amateurs. What do you reckon, guys, for that? Yeah, d- yeah definitely. That's Great performance, yeah. yeah when, when you've only got, as I know, my team, we've only really got three points at the bottom of the league. Yeah, so to win to beat a team like Newcastle Benfield 3 1 is really good, really good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's uh, the result of the day, that one, I would have said. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm totally agree with you, Bob. There, yeah. Um, Sunday, Sunday saw one more game, didn't it? Uh, again, an all NCL affair. First Division Wasborough playing Hansworth of the Premier, and Hansworth came out 2 0 winners. So, <clears throat> Wasborough's there. Uh, cup run comes to an end. So if we have a look at the draw then, gents, before we get on to the, uh, the bread and butter stuff of the league, uh, <clears throat> for the first round of the FA Vars, Albion Sport play Borough Rangers. Now, Richard, you might know a bit about Borough Rangers coming from Middlesbrough. Yeah, well, Borough Rangers, I think, are leading top of the Northern League at the moment, I think. Yeah. So it'll, it'll be a really tough game that one for them. It, it will, because uh, but I mean Albion don't uh, <laughs> they don't give up easily. They're a good team. Um, Beverly Town, oh, got a home tie at the Norwood against Abbey Hay, who beat uh, Peniston in the last round. So that looks a tough task for Beverly, but they're, they're starting to pick up a little bit, aren't they? And they've they've had had one or two additions to the squad that look like they're uh, scoring and doing well. So. I might, I might have a nod to Beverly there, uh, gents, for that one. Don't know what you guys think. It'll be a good crowd as well, I reckon. Oh, it will be. Yeah, the good people of Beverly certainly get behind the team when they're when the tails are up. Uh, North Allerton Town versus Campion, another club from your neck of the woods, Richard. You know a little bit about North Allerton. What do you reckon yeah, to that North one? Al- I know North Allerton very well. It's, yeah. um, there'll be a tougher test than. Um... Billingham Champion had it then Billingham Synthonia. Mm. Um, they're about halfway up the Northern League. Yeah. But uh, Campion on form, it, there won't be much in it. Campion has yeah. certainly got every chance. Yeah, they, 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 they're picking up a bit, Campion, aren't they? Uh, Wakefield, what a tie for Wakefield. <clears throat> North Shields, what a mm. great tie. 
Um, can you remember Richard Barton when they had that really good run in the Vars playing at North Shields? And what a great game yeah. that was. It was, four three. yeah. Four, four three. Did Barton get it back to 3-3 three, three and then uh, North Shields went up the other end and scored right in the, yeah. right at the death? Yeah. What a great, what a great game that was. They brought, we a, ran out. they brought a lot of spectators with them as well, didn't they? Uh, they did. We ran out of beer as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, chairman weren't happy when we ran out of beer. <laughs> but there you go. So, I mean, they're, uh, top, they're top 10 in the Northern League as well at the moment. Oh, yeah. So, that'll be, again, that'll be <clears throat> a tough one for Wakefield, but uh, we'll see how they get on. Uh, Wormwell play Hansworth. Really good test for Wombwell, that, because they're really flying at the moment, aren't they, in Division 1? And that'll be, a good, that'll be a good benchmark for to see where they are, really, what they're playing Hansworth of the uh, Prem, because Hansworth are, are, are a good team. They're always there or thereabouts, aren't they, Hansworth? So that'll be a good game, guys. And finally, Yorkshire Amateurs play the Conquerors of Ghoul, New Mills. So can, yeah. York, can Yorkshire Amateurs uh, do it again? Never know. You never know, do you? Never at know. Got, at least they've got home advantage. And yep. um for yep. every chance. Don't think a lot of teams fancy going to bracket edge on that pitch. So come on, the amateur. Let's see you win. Right. Let's go back to the bread and butter then. <coughs> Friday night. Last Friday night. So Friday night is football night. Division one. South Leeds two, Shelley two. Good draw there for the, the two newcomers. And this is good for me. I like this one. Swallowness nil, not the score. Durning District 4. What a great crowd at the Swall Zero. 286. The chairman that's will be true. rubbing his hands there, won't he? 286. That's a good crowd, that. It's Friday, yeah, night, it it's Friday night football, as I've said before, though, isn't it? You know. It seems to be a winner, doesn't it? It certainly does. So, yeah. uh, um, I mean, uh, we had a good crowd with Barton and Gull. We, we always want more, don't we? But uh, we do, and that was well, that was a real good advert, wasn't it? I know we keep going on, but what a great advert for football that was, Barton and uh, Gull. It was, it was, you definitely. Got, you got your money's worth and you got your excitement as well. Anyway, enough said about that, the better. <laughs> so Saturday, Saturday, the Premiership, Barton Town 1, Silsden nil. Richard, what did you think of the game then? Uh, I thought very tight game. Yeah. Absolutely nothing between the two teams. Yeah. And, um, very few chances and uh, Barton probably had slightly more, couple more chances, I think, overall and took one of them. Was it Elliot Broughton that scored? Yeah, good goal. Yeah. yeah. I, thought, I thought there was a couple of, um, although on the VEO camera it does look offside, there was a couple of, uh, I wouldn't say dodgy decisions, but mm, iffy. Nice. Yeah. If he, yeah. yeah, if he. To be fair, to be fair, the sun was in the one of the officials' eyes. That's all I say. <laughs> but uh, um, no, it was a, it was a tight game. Yeah, it really was. So Eccles Hill won, Parkgate two. Good win for Parkgate at Eccles Hill, that isn't it? So yeah, I think I think Parkgate are beginning to get to the, sort of know the, the know the league again. Uh, Golka four, Bottisford nil. Well, we know what Golka are like, Richard, so that's another good win for Golka. But I think um, Sam Kelly has sustained a goalkeeper, he sustained a nasty injury uh, for Golka. So we w- wish him a speedy recovery. I think it was a knee injury he's got. And he's a good keeper, isn't he, Richard? Sam he Kelly. Is, yes, yeah. But I think, I mean, I think the lad is the number two's pretty decent as well, isn't he? You just, I've just got that written down. Harry Stead, sound replacement, yeah. I've put. Yeah, Harry Stead, he is a good keeper, is Harry. Um, so all the best to you, Sam. Hope you get well soon. Uh, I think your brother will be uh, a bit happy that you're maybe not playing because you, you you do tend to rollick him somewhat. <laughs> 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 a bit like the ward biz <laughs> at Barton. So, uh, Rossington four, Pickering one. Good win for Rossington. Uh, Thackley two, Hallam one. Ooh, now that was a good test for Thackley. A yardstick for the form, isn't it? That one to beat Hallam. Yeah, good result there. Yeah, definitely. So, thank- so if we go to Division One, then Dromfield won. Uh, I can never remember the team. Uh, it's um, Club Thorn. Club Thorn. Club Thorn. I always have co- uh, I always have Colliery down, and I can never remember what it is. Near my brain, <laughs> Club Thorn Colliery nil. So that's a good win for Dromfield. 
Glass out in Tilbury Town too. Uh, I see Josh uh, Batty on the goal goal list again for uh, Brig, and I saw was it Mister Agnew, the manager, scoring a goal. Yeah. The ever the evergreen Brett Agnew. Well done. So two two, Ilkley three, Appleby Frodingham one. So that was a, a good win for Ilkley. Uh, Appleby Frodingham are finding it difficult, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're really finding it difficult. I know they sort of come good. Uh, Louth one, Horbury three. Good win for Horbury. Difficult place to go. Long journey for them on a Saturday afternoon. So well done to Horbury, and a good win for Nostell, uh, beating uh, the Inform Athersley Wreck four nil. And uh, Mister Klimchak, another hat trick. He's scored a few goals, hasn't he, for Nostell? Oh, he has, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's Saturday sorted out, gentlemen. Midweek, very busy, as we know, Richard. Uh, yeah. We'll go with uh, the NCL Prem. Frickley 2, Silsden 3. Uh, Cody Cromack with a very late uh, winner to sink uh, Frickley's hearts. 214 there as well. Good crowd. Uh, goal 1, Beverly 4. Bob. 226 good souls there, Bob. But... Yeah, good crowd. Um, yeah. But Goal, Goal's never played Beverly before in the league. That was our oh, first right. thing. So yeah. that was a first. But yeah. what I did on... But this is a little subplot. On the Monday... I sent mm. a, a message to James Hogarth from the Umberside Sport. Oh, yes. could, he give, could he give a mention because it's a it's a East Yorkshire derby, you know? Yeah, yeah. Down. And he did, he did on the Monday night, which was good on the sports oh, program. Oh, and, well, then, then, and then he got a message to me on late Monday night. Would I like to come and have a chat about it? So I had a quick chat on the Tuesday sports program, BBC Sports. Oh. So you can get on BBC. I'm going to put this plug in. You can get on BBC Sounds Tuesday night. Yeah. 40 minutes <clears> in, <throat> and you can hear my brief chat. <clears throat> was it good? It was good, yes. But I, 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 was, I was a bit worried in case next day he'd come back to me and ask me about the game. Just we lost <laughs> four wins. <laughs> well, at least you plug in the club and at least you plug yeah. in the NCL. So well done, yeah, Bob. That's what I wanted to do, you know. Because yeah. the only thing I couldn't, I didn't get in because I didn't get a chance. I wanted to give the podcast a plug, but I never got a chance. Well, there you go. A bit like it's, it's a bit like what you were supposed to be doing last week, but you didn't get chance. Yeah, yeah. You remember? I got my final sentence in. You uh, did, you did. Just, just in time. Yeah, well yeah. done, mate. Well done. Right. But, so, but two, just go back, yeah, just going back, back to your game, yeah. yeah. Harry, Harry Spooner, he, he scored for us. We, got, we went 1 0 up and thought, going to be a good night. But Beverly got an equaliser and went 2 1 up at half time. Yeah. And then the second half, well, really, good goal. Beverly were the better team on the night and got two more goals. I mean, the, the third one, our defence was, well, was lacking. It wasn't there. And uh, yeah. they made it 4 1. And um, yeah, good win for Beverly. But we what did you, goal. Yeah. What did you think of Beverly, uh, Bob? Oh, they're, they're, a good, they're a good team. I can, I can see that they're, they're now getting to grips with the league. I yeah. Can see yeah. yeah. I mean, we've had a bit of a. A, a, a quiet start, you could say, but yeah, but, but um, the win on the win on the Vars on Saturday, now they've beaten us four yeah, one. So, yeah. yeah, so it, it's looking brighter there. I just thought we can start looking brighter. My team can start looking brighter soon. You know, I think goal will. I think goal will. So, <clears throat> what well, great crowd at Hallam, four hundred forty five on a Tuesday night in Sheffield, beating yeah. Rossington four one. That don't look good for us, Richard. We've got to go there Tuesday night, haven't we? So. <clears throat> tough one. Yeah. Be a tough one. Um and where where we were, Richard, at Mans Lane. What a long journey, made even more longer with the A sixty three closed. So yeah. I mean <clears throat> you got home before me, but back at half past eleven at night. Ridiculous. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. But hey ho. But they've been messing about with the A sixty three for the last two or three years. Haven't they? That I mean, when's that bridge going to be finished in goal? Oh, that's, that's that's like it that. will be. Yeah, is that another one, Bob? Uh, don't get your started. <laughs> <laughs> well, they said it was going to be finished about eighteen months ago, but then yeah. they keep finding more problems. And so, as somebody said, they could have built a new bridge by the time they've done this. Really? Oh, definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. But there you go. Anyway, 
That's for another day. Well, Knaresborough won, Barton Town won. It was a game of two penalties, wasn't it, really, Richard? It was, yeah. yeah. Um, definitely a, a clear-cut penalty for Barton. It was a push in the box, wasn't it? Um, and then, the, the, then uh, Knaresborough's penalty, what was it, in the 90th minute? Well, yeah, it was in stoppage time, wasn't it? I stoppage think. time. Um, yeah. What was your? What was your? What? What did you think, Rich? I mean, you know, I'm so biased; it's terrible. But I, I, I thought it I was. Didn't think, I didn't think it was on the time, and having and having watched it on the VO, it definitely isn't. All oh, right, all oh, right. It, um, oh. it comes across it. The lad's actually trying to get his arm out of the way way of it, and it just slightly clips his arm. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. Do, it doesn't take any pace off the ball. It doesn't change yeah. any direction. It drops to a striker in front of the goal, as it's saved. Yeah. If, there's no if um, if that's a penalty, then there's no hope for us. No, no. no I, attempt I, I, whatsoever to yeah. put his hand to the ball or anything. Yeah, I thought it was very, very opposite. harsh. Because they played ever so well, Barton, didn't they, on the night? Really well. They they sort of quelled everything Nesbury threw at them, which they didn't throw a great deal at them, did they? There was one one good save in the second half from uh, James Hitchcock. Their keeper, as Bob always says, their keeper was man of the match, wasn't he? And he was man of the match. Yeah, he looked a good goalkeeper. Tommy Brown. What a great keeper he was. Yeah. Uh, just remind us to send him the VEO footage for his, uh, for his scrapbook. <laughs> yes. Well, it was... I mean, that's the best I've seen Barton Town play at Knaresborough. So... Yeah. I've been going six six years there, and I've not seen us win yet. And with decisions like that, we never will win. But no, I'll never get anything there. Never, never, never be a win there. And, and to be fair, I'm not bashing the referee. To be fair, he was a good referee. Yeah, I thought he had a good game. Yeah. Young lad, wasn't he? I thought yeah, the young, young he had lad. a good game. He did. He booked people when they needed booking. He did. He did what a lot of referees don't do. He stamped it out early on, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, but it's just just the penalty I was a little bit disappointed with, really. But nobody can be perfect. So anyway, that's enough about Barton Town. Uh, Tadcaster two, Parkgate three. That's six points in two games for uh, for Parkgate. So they really are going well, aren't they? Yeah. Did you see who scored two goals for them? Was it Ross yeah. Duggan? Ross Duggan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ross, well, Ross is on fire. A good yeah. player, Ross. He just yeah, just gets in the right, right, you know, everywhere in the right place. Right, I just want to just go off track a little bit and congratulations to our own Adam, Mr. Rossington Gittings for his oh, nomination yeah. for video content in non-league football. I mean, he, along with a lot of others, do the best to put our game on the map, don't they? So, well yeah. done, well done, Adam, and I hope you win. He's, he's down to the down to the yeah, ten, uh, ten, isn't it? And he's going down yeah, to Tottenham, been... Tottingham Hotspur, isn't he? The White Hart Lane to uh, he'll have to buy a new oh. suit. Have you voted for him? I voted for him this evening because he, he sent him. Oh. Listen, I think he's on Facebook. I'll vote, vote for him. I'll vote for him. I might even buy him Don Revy's lucky blue suit. <laughs> <laughs> so well, well done, Adam, and we'll we'll all vote for you, mate. Don't you worry about that. So going on to Division One again, it was a busy night there, wasn't it? Arrogate Railway mm. 1, Athersley 2, so Athersley back on it. Uh, Horbury 3, Armthorpe 1, the train kept a rolling at Horbury. Uh, Swallownest 1, Selby 3, another 184 there at the Swall Zero, so they're really getting behind the team, aren't they? Mm. But, mm. but a, a good win for Selby on the road. Woonwell 5, Maltby 1, another train there at Woonwell. 187 there again, another good crown for Tuesday night. And York, this is another result there. I know they lost, but Yorkshire Amateurs 2, Dernan District 3. Two very late goals to win it, though, wasn't there? There was, certainly oh, was, yeah. No, so, and I mean, we've seen Dernan District, Richard, and we, we, we think they're a decent outfit, don't we? Yeah, and they've added Liam King since we saw them as well. So. Yeah, yes, your good so friend. They're a real good friend. crack at it. They are, aren't they? Old, old yeah. Kingy. Uh, but they, never missed a penalty at Ferriby, did he, Richard? No, great penalty taker. Yeah, there you go. As you would say, Richard, as you've said many times before, you could bet your mortgage on him. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Wednesday night then. Let's go on to Wednesday night. Premiership, Campion 1, Peniston 3. Oh, dear me. Campion. 
The wheels have dropped off there a little bit. But Peniston, you know, re doing really well, aren't they? I know they got knocked out of the cup on the Saturday, but uh, it was uh, twice nightly. Uh, old uh, Kitely wants it double bubble. Yeah. He's got a couple. He's always on the score sheet, is Nathan. Uh, Evergreen, good player. Uh, Hansworth one, Ecclesill two. What a difference a week. What a difference a week makes. Get thumped eight one at Naysborough and then went to went two one at Hansworth. Yeah, remarkable. So, well, yeah, well, I was chatting to a guy from Naysborough and he said it really it wasn't an eight one game. Um, they scored four really late goals. Did um, Naysborough, but Eccles Hill back on the back on the horse two one at Hansworth. And uh, my good friends at Winter and they're not really. So they're getting to grips with it at the moment. They lost 2-0 to Albion, didn't they? So it's, they're struggling a bit. But uh, and uh, we've said this before, haven't we, Richard? They won't be struggling on Saturday, will they? They'll, yeah. they'll really will. They'll they'll pick the game up and with one or two will have uh, man of the match performances, won't they, Rich? Certainly will. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the big game for us, isn't it? The big Lincolnshire derby, uh, yeah. Barton Town versus Winterton. That'll be a big one. So. Let's have a look at the tables. I know you'll have your tables there, Bob, but we have a look yeah. at Div the, the Division 1 table because it's shaping up nice. Most most teams have played maybe 10, 11 games. Some have got eight, of course. Uh, so it's Horbury at the top from Dernan District. Mm. Uh, Horbury, 28 points. Dernan District, 27 points. Wombwell, 26 points. But they've played but, two games less, haven't they, than Dernan District? So it's very tight, them top three, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then you've got Athersley. They've got more points than they've probably got all last season. So they're having a really good go at it, Athersley, and I'm, I'm chuffed to bits for them. Uh, on 22, and Maltby, Maltby Main, from Muglet Lane, they're on they're in fifth on 20 points. Um, The only team that haven't lost a game in both leagues, who do you think it is? Hmm. Not Horbury. Horbury. No, Horbury, you're going, no. You're going Horbury. You'll be, it's Woomwell. Mm. Horbury have lost one away. Denham District have lost one at home. Woomwell haven't. Athersley's lost three. And Maltby's lost two away. So, Woomwell, only team in both leagues. I could be wrong, but I think I am right there. So, bottom for the Division, uh, division 1. Well, Yorkshire Amateurs are struggling out. They played 10, got three points. Appleby Frod, they're not getting to grips with the league yet. 12 games, four points. And Wasborough, eight games and four points. I think Wasborough could pull away there. Um, but uh, Yorkshire Amateurs. Could they be turning a corner, I ask myself? They might be. So, if we yeah. go to... Yeah, if we go to the Prem, uh, you've got Peniston at the top. Uh, played 11, 25 points. Uh, Thackley they've only played nine games 19 points so if Thackley win their games in hand they could be right up there couldn't they yeah uh, sure. and having beaten Hallam as well it shows they're going to be right they up are, there doesn't they? It? Yeah. yeah I mean they played well last season uh, yeah. so if they can stick it I think they'll do well Golker played eight, 18 points Thilsden played 10 18 points Hallam played 9 and 17 points and Albion played 10 and 16 points. So it's all the usual runners and riders up there, isn't it? I don't think there's any... Would you say there's any any team there that you might not have thought was going to be up there? No, not really. No, not I really. Don't I don't. Richard? No, I don't think so. I think it's what you'd expect. I think... It, uh, yeah. I certainly fancy Penniston to uh, get over the line this season. Yeah. You, you, you've said that from day one, yeah. What about you, Bob? Who do you think... Uh, who did you say was going to go all the way? Well, well I think Peniston, yeah, I, I agree with Richard. I mean, there's still, I mean, 25 points from 11 games, that's a good good ratio, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. They're, um, they're unbeaten at home. Then but but Golka, Golka, I only played eight games, 18 points. Yeah. I mean, if they, if they was to win all the remaining games, there'd be two points in front of Peniston. Yeah, so. yeah another, another another team unbeaten at home, lost two away, mm -hmm. Golka. Uh so if we look at the, I, I have to do this, Bob. I'm ever so sorry, but if we look no, at no, the no. bottom. Uh, goal nine games, four points. It's it's what you said, 
it's your it's your goals against, isn't it? Yeah, twenty four minus twenty four. I mean, yeah, it's like we, you we, said. We need to tighten the defense. Up. Yeah. Well, we need to overall. We need to play better. That's yeah. the, that's, you know. Well, if you could play like you played against us, you'd be all right. Yeah, I, I just hope because our chairman after the match on uh, Tuesday was very down with our, you know, which would yeah. expect we were, we all were as volunteers. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's it, nobody likes to lose. You like you like a win or you like to play well. So, uh, Winton down there, surprisingly, nineteenth place. Night played nine, got six points, minus sixteen. So. Went it in a really young team with one or two. But they've got one or two old heads in there, haven't they, Richard, who, who uh, yeah. can guide the lads. So I don't know what I don't know what the problem is at Winton. I don't think they can score. Uh, but as I say, they'll definitely raise the game on Saturday. They always do. <laughs> Says a bitter man here. Uh, <laughs> who's seen this team has lost many times to Winton. So I think we, we, we're, we're due one. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. 18, and Bottesford, they've seemed to have stalled a little bit after a really good start. They've but but they've, they've played eight and uh, seven points minus eight. But those teams, those three teams at the bottom, I mean, Goal wins it. Have only played nine games, and Bottesford have only played eight games. So, you're like a couple of games behind, really, aren't they? Mm. Uh, you, you, your teams unbeaten at home. We've got eight teams unbeaten at home. Penniston Gold Corral being at Barton, Barton Town, Stilsden, Hallam, Pickering, and Rossington. And we've got one team who have been unbeaten away. Now, they're not played that many, but it's Handsworth. So well done. Division one teams, unbeaten at home. You've got three teams Harbury, Woomwell, and Maltby. And teams unbeaten away, you've just got the two Dernan District and Woomwell. So, as we've said before, Woomwell are unbeaten home and away. So well done. So what we'll do is we'll go on to our we'll go on to our um we like to travel around the grounds. Now, Bob, you were at home for both of your games, so you've yes. not been anywhere this week. No. Uh and where are you? Are you at home again this Saturday? No, we're away to Bottisford. So that's a big game for both right, teams. Bottisford. So what we're gonna do if <clears throat> if Sai's unavailable or he's not been away, we'll have a we'll have a Ground of the week, we'll have Bottesford. So I want you to uh, give me uh, your thoughts on Bottesford's ground for next week. I'll do that, yes, definitely. Should be good because it's a nice ground. It so, is tidy. Yeah. It's very tidy. So the ground of the week for us, now we travelled up to Nairsborough on Tuesday night and to say it's not a happy hunting ground for the Swans is an understatement, isn't it, Richard? Certainly is, yeah. yeah. As I said yeah. before, my record is six visits, no win. Two draws and four losses, so that's not yeah. good. But the ground itself, it really looks superb on Tuesday night, didn't it, Rich? It did, yeah. It's in great really condition. Nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, <clears throat> easy to find the ground as well. Yeah. Decent food there, although you didn't partake, Richard, I did. Uh, some lovely sandwiches, I must admit, at half time. Nice clubhouse and bar. Hospitality is second to none. A really knowledgeable and friendly volunteers as well. And we thought we'd seen Eddie Gray, didn't we? We did, yeah, yeah. But he wasn't Eddie Gray, it was a lookalike. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a spitting image of uh, Eddie Gray, wasn't he? He was, yeah, yeah. So, uh, the pitch was in good nick. Uh, they've got a small stand at one, one side, haven't they, Richard? And yeah. uh, they've got uh, uh, like a terrace at where we stand under at one end, the car park end. And you can get behind the goal at the far end now, so that's quite good. So, and the usual fair down where the dugouts are, it's all open standing. So, it's not a bad ground, is it, Rich? That's yeah, good ground, yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's, 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 It'd be so, a nice place to go for the results there, we're all right. Well, I know it would, boys. <laughs> <laughs> we, I said to Simon Park last season, I said, I bet you wish you played us every week, which is can't beat you. Yeah. So, they had a chuckle yeah. at that. But anyway, team of the week. So, we all choose a team of the week. So, I'm going to come to you, Bob. I'm going to come to you last, Bob, because you might have one up your sleeve. Richard, what what was your team of the week, performance of the week? Oh, so, I'm the now the few. There's obviously um, Yorkshire Amateur. I think if uh, Harrogate hadn't got beaten midweek, I would have gone for them. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go for 
Wormwell with two wins this week. Wormwell with two wins this week. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're really doing well. So that's one well for Richard. Right. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm a bit boring, but I'm going to go Yorkshire Amateurs beating Newcastle Benfield. I thought that was such a good result for, for Yorkshire Amateurs. And they nearly, they nearly backed it up with a, with a good, either a draw or a win over Dernan District. Just two late goals stopped them. So Yorkshire Amateurs for me by beating Newcastle Benfield. So, Bob, over well, to you. Well, I'm, I'm going to agree with Richard. I'm going to go for one well. Oh, I mean, right. They, they had a good win in the Vars. Yeah, um, and then they beat Mortby Main because Mortby's been playing well to beat Mortby 5 1 mm. on the other night and it moved them into third position. And then when you've said, Aaron, that they're unbeaten this year, this season yeah. so far, yeah, yeah, but yeah. they are my team for the week because I said they've moved into third position now. And with that game in hand, they won it, they'll be top of the division one, they'll be one point in front of Arbury, yeah, yeah. So, well, good shout. So it's one for one well for the boys and and Yorkshire amateurs for me. So all the teams, well done, well done. <clears throat> but I'm just going to throw this one this one out. I always throw throw a, a question out, and I said I asked I chat with Richard on Tuesday night about this. Players who players who play wearing glasses. Can you think of anybody in the league or the league's gone that actually played wearing glasses? Can't no, I can't. All the players could, you've seen, Bob. I could, I could never, I could never cricket it. Jeffrey Boycott, you've played glasses with cricket, but football. Yeah. No. See so now, in the, in the modern age, they all play contact. Can be contact yeah. lenses. You know? Yeah. I mean, Edgar like David used to have glasses, didn't he? Yeah. 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 It'd probably be black and white football with glasses, wouldn't it? That far back now. <laughs> yeah, it was the well. There was a Belgian called Jeff Juro or Jeff Ju. I can never remember his name. And he used to have, he used to look a little bit like uh, the guy off Carry On. What was he called? Um, with little glasses on. I can't remember his name. Charles Autry. Charles Autry. Well done, Richard. Yeah, he used to look like him. Uh, was it was, I think it was in the fifties. I think Jeff Juro or something. He was Belgian. Well, I can think. Yes, yeah, there was a there was a guy who played. He played at Premier League, then he went to manage Barnet, little little fella. He used to wear dark glasses, didn't he? Edgar David, I just said that five minutes on ago. The, on the <laughs> <laughs> yes. The only one I've seen yeah. in this league is the uh, Grimsby Borough goalkeeper. Oh, Liam oh, Higgs. Yes. Higgs. Yeah, yes. yeah yes. Ego, he, he wears glasses. And there's a little fact about Igor. Um, he's a very good keeper, but also just as good outfield as well. So he's played outfield for Cleethorpes for before. Really good. Just, just, he's just one of them. He's a bit like Roy Cackley used to be. Everything he does, he's good at. <laughs> you get them people, don't you? Yeah, you yeah, get them yeah. people in life. No matter what they do, they're always good. And you can't dislike them because they're just nice people. Um, there was a lad. There was a lad, and I can't remember his name. Played for Hall Road Rangers about five or six seasons ago. I think Alex, somebody he used to have, just have normal glasses on, and just run around. Uh, real, real, real good player, you know. Give it everything, and I can't remember his name, but you just don't see it very, very often, do you? With uh, yeah, well, glasses, I would, I would imagine FA regulations. You won't be able to play with glasses nowadays. Well, um, no, you wouldn't, would you? Can you take them off? No, I can't see. Um, no. But they, you can get sports glasses. I mean. For me, since I I used to referee, uh, uh, I used to do the futsal indoors with the with the weighted ball, and uh, I used to get a lot of young lads with the sports glasses on. They're like all plasticky ones. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, with a with a with a, a band around them at the back. So, but yeah, I just thought I'd throw that one in. It's just something you don't often see, is it? Oh no, uh, absolutely. Uh... <laughs> That's it for this edition. If you've got any news for the podcast or you'd like to appear on the podcast, please email ncelpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.